dealing with textiles, you fall into the world of craft. I mean, if you look at the history of textiles itself, it's always been considered, you know, women's work or very feminine. In reality, it's something that is part of our everyday lives. And it's like, that's something people kind of need to realize or, you know, start to learn is that textiles are extremely important to the history of, you know, humans themselves. Like, you know, the first thing we ever put on was, you know, textiles or animal skin. My name is Dakota Mace. I am a UW graduate student and a lot of my work deals with Navajo textiles and textile design. If you look at the history of not only indigenous people, but just people in general, we've all been influenced by one another. The weaving culture itself has existed for thousands of years, and it's, you know, in various cultures, and not only are our styles very similar in weaving, but just our connection to the process and to the materials. Um, if you definitely look more into my work, a lot of my weavings and the materials that I choose are intentional. Um, my processes usually are very European-based weaving styles. Materials itself are usually traditional Navajo wool. Being here in Madison, I notice um, kind of how art is a great way to translate a different way to um, bring a better understanding of what it means to be Native American and what our kind of cultural upbringing um, kind of influences the way that we do certain things. And through my work, I've kind of introduced a kind of a window for people to kind of be invited into my own Navajo culture. Yep. My Navajo upbringing uh, it was extremely influential to not only my work but also my graduate research. Uh, I focus not only on Navajo textiles but also the way people look at Navajo textiles and kind of the history behind collecting these objects. And, um, and again, this all deals with the idea of wanting to create a better understanding that you can use different materials and techniques and still give, you know, reference back to other cultures, but also use it to create your own designs within yours. You know, it's like, what at what point do, you know, you can take a symbol from one culture and apply it to another culture. And I think there is, again, the idea of just giving respect to that culture itself and saying like, hey, this is where I was inspired from. This is the reason why I'm using this motif. And rather than people just, you know, pulling from different cultures and claiming it as their own, um, this is a better way to kind of create a better understanding of how we can approach appropriation in a better and positive light. Usually, you know, that is your own choice to decide what it means to appropriate from another culture, but also it isn't my job to kind of create guidelines to what is appropriation and what is appreciation. More or less, it's about having respect for a culture and explaining to others that, you know, this object that I bought comes from this country or so-and-so, and it has significance for me, but also to the person who made it. And I think that's the, the beauty of, you know, being inspired from other cultures is that, you know, you don't need to have you know, an entire <laughs> historical background to the, the to the technique of the materials that you're using, but so long as you're giving respect to that culture, I think that's what is most the most important thing about the difference between appropriation and appreciation.